Hello, thank you for checking out my video today. Today's video is going to be about my 8086 motherboard project. So what I've done is I've expanded on my 8088 project and made it 16-bit. Um, I don't know if this is worth pursuing a lot just to get the 16-bit wide data bus because it takes quite a few more parts. So I'm going to go over the boards real quick and show you some comparisons and then we'll boot it up. It doesn't work quite yet, but it does boot up a little bit. So anyway, so to start with, I've got the main board. Now, as you can see, all I've done is expanded my 8-bit board. So you can see side by side here. You see they're pretty much identical. Just now I've got 16-bit wide data bus there. And it's actually, this part of the project is probably correct as far as the build goes because all I had to do was just to expand the slots and then add some pull-up, pull-down resistors there. Uh, everything else is identical to this board over here. So with that being said, I'll just go over it real quick. So you've got your 16-bit uh, ISA slots here. And you can put on an 8-bit slot. I put this here for my CGA card. And then I've got my extension slot here for the processor card. And this would be for a DMA controller. I have not even attempted to build one of them yet. But I put that on there so it could be added. I've got the I.O. decoding here, which decodes for the keyboard controller and port 61 and the USB port. Uh, and then it provides some decoding that can go to the processor card for the interrupt controller and the system timer. Got a clock here with a crystal, the 14.31818, which is the frequency needed to get the appropriate ISA click, uh, oscillate, and for the uh, speaker, for the, uh, it's like one twelfth of that for the speaker. Got some decoding here. This is just for the speaker uh, inverter here, uh, LSO4, used for various things. Um, this one I put on a plug-in speaker. Lately, I've just been doing a uh, the speaker right on the board. But where this is a prototype, I didn't. I just figured I'd use one of these. Uh, it's also why I didn't put in the rest of the slots. Uh, being a prototype, I, it takes forever to solder those slots slots in. So. Uh, I just soldered what I needed. Um, power button locks in and out. There is a header here for a toggle switch to put for your case. I didn't even solder that one in. Reset button. 24-pin uh, ISA socket. Uh, there's a little line here. It says 20, 24. So if you had a 20-pin, you could, you could plug it in. The header for the USB. You just use a... Uh, CH-376, uh, uh, and then just a regular USB drive. The keyboard, uh, still using the uh, the Winbond or the, uh, the this one over here. The, so you got the 82C42 and the 83C42, which will both work, uh, taking that it is built correctly. So let's look at the, the memory real quick. So as you can see, this is basically just a, a duplication of this and then mirrored. Because you've got your even bank over here and now I have an odd bank over here. Now this is not the finished memory card. I'm gonna make a, uh, a different memory card if I can get this thing to work right that uh, actually will be a little bit smaller using less chips. So right now the way this one is wired is only the odd addresses are read from this side and only the evens are from this side. So you're not using the full chips at all. You're only using half of each one. Um, I'm trying to decide on the ROM for the final project. You're going to have to have two ROMs, one for odd, one for even. But I'm thinking that I'm going to keep it like this where one only reads even, one reads odd so that you don't have to 
write all your odd bytes to one and all your even bytes to another. You just burn it as if it's a regular ROM for like the 8088, like here. But and then you can just plug them in. You don't have to have an even or an odd. It'd just be the same if that makes sense. So now something that I had to add to this, which learning about the extended ISA socket. There's a memory 16 chip select and an I.O. chip select. So basically, this card tells the board slash processor that it is 16-bit, not 8. So I have this extra decoding up here. So when a valid address is selected on the memory card, it enables by pulling that uh, by that pin low so that it knows that this is a 16-bit device. And this is what actually makes this project quite a bit more complicated than the 8-bit project, is you it's still 8-bit compatible, which I understand why they did it, but it makes it quite difficult to build. So with that being said, we'll go on to the processor card. So here's the 8086 versus the 8088. And this is why I wonder if it's financially feasible to even go this route just to gain the 16-bit wide uh, data uh, bus. So, as you can see, you've got your processor just like here. And then you've got two latches and a data bus here, but you have three latches and four for your data transceivers. Now, this, they're, they're not all used for transceivers, but you can see there's four times what's there and one more of those on the board. Now, the purpose for this is you got to latch all your address lines. You also need to latch your bank high enable. I want to say it's like pin 34 on the processor. Then you have your transceiver for what I would say normal operations, which is address 0 through 7 and then 8 through 15 coming down to the the bus. But then you have another one, which through all this decoding over here and that memory chip select for 16-bit, when it's not selected, if you want to, or when it writes odd and it's not a 16-bit card, it goes through a, a another uh, transceiver, and those upper six, eight bits go through the lower eight bits on the bus to make it eight bit compatible. Which I kind of wish they didn't do that. It's it's to make it compatible, but it just makes it you have to add all this extra just to be compatible with the world. So anyway, up here I've got my address. Uh, for my, uh, sorry, the memory read-write, I.O. read-write. And you can see there's two of them. Now the reason for this is when they made the extended ISA, you had memory read-write here and a memory read-write here. They're not the same, uh, they're not the same pins. They're not connected uh, together. So what this one is, if I remember right, is designated for the lower one megabyte only for the the ones that are on the original ISA. And then the, the ones up here are always memory read-write or always active, no matter above the one meg or below the one meg. So I just went and put two on here so that even though this project only has one megabyte of memory, you have, it, it's still separated and they're not connected. Uh, I just didn't want it to cause issues later on down the road if they were connected together. This can always be redesigned. Um, so, anyway, we'll just continue on. We've got our clock here. I put in a 10 megahertz crystal on this one. I just wanted it to run slow. Because sometimes if you max out your project when you're developing it, uh, you've run into issues. So I just had it run. So it's run about 3.3 megahertz. I have the system timer and then two interrupt controllers. Now, originally I was gonna build this with just one, but I went ahead and put two on there. The uh, second one obviously goes to the extended ISA bus there. 
And I figured, you know, I'm already got the card this big. I might as well just plug in a second interrupt controller. So, and then I've got some uh, resistors here, pull up, pull down. I think these ones are all pull up. This is a pull down resistor here, used for various decoding and whatever needs to be, have a resistor on it. And these two resistors go to the uh, crystal. So, anyway, I'm going to plug it all together here real quick and we'll show you it booting up. So, you can plug this into either slot. You can see it's a pretty long socket. And then this memory just plugs into one of the 16-bit sockets. Put our hard drive here, USB drive. And then I'm going to be using today my CGA card. So, I'll put it, move it over here. So I got it all connected together, put in the power here. I'll push the power button with my uh, palm there. It's all right, I'll just let it boot up. So I haven't been able to get a VGA card to work with the uh, PC, the ATX BIOS that's available from the third party source, but I can get my CGA card to activate. So what this demonstrates I uh, I was having trouble getting the uh, the color codes right on there, so that's why all those dots are on there. But you can see it does display the BIOS uh, version and that it's a V30. Let's try to reboot it again. Now with that, so with this running the way it is. You have an 8-bit card right here that's running, and you have a 16-bit memory card that's running here. And as you can see that uh, the USB drive is flashing, which is also an 8-bit, but this is only on the even side, so that's, that's not so much of a problem. But you can see it's trying to load the USB drive and try to boot DOS, but it's, this is where it stops. So this is where I've gotten so far with the project. I'm not sure if it's a code issue or if I got to work some of the hardware a little bit more, but I'll uh, definitely give you updates as I make improvements on it. So anyway, if you have any questions, uh, email me or leave a comment and uh, I'll try to get back to you. So thanks for checking out my video today.